This is Robert Kalua with the news on Zodiac. Let's have a look at the headlines. 2020 MSc examination results are out with a 41% pass rate. Meg bemoans act of violence and voter apathy in Tuesday's by-election as it announces official results. Norman Chisali's fake certificate case adjourned to April 12 as he is reportedly unwell. In sports, President Chakwira hosts the Flames to a luncheon following the team's Afghan qualification. Now the news in detail. Let's begin with the news that the 2020 Malawi School Certificate of Education examinations are out with a 41% pass rate. Only 57,293 candidates have passed out of 138,310. The Minister of Education, Agnes Nyalonje, says this is the lowest pass rate in over a decade. Western Guta reports. We had 158,310 candidates who searched for the examination. Out of this, 57,293 candidates have passed. This represents a pass rate of 41.42%. Announcing the results in Lilongwe, Manib Acting Executive Director Dorothy Nampota has said that the pass rate this year has dropped by 9% as compared to 2019 with a pass rate of only 41.42%. Nampota announced that out of 138,310 candidates that sat for the examinations, only 57,293 candidates passed. Nampoda has said results will be sent in the centers that candidates registered. Minister of Education Agnes Nyalonje, while saying the exams were well managed and that they were cheating and leakage free, said this is the lowest result in over a decade. She adds that closure of schools in March 2020, shifting and cancellation of exams which left candidates disoriented, contributed to the low pass rate. Out of the 138,000 310 candidates that sat for the examinations, 22,270 females passed out of 64,297 females, while 35,023 males passed out of 74,013 males. The 2020 MSCE exams were administered from 5th January to 29th January 2021 after being cancelled in October last year following a massive leakage. Reporting for Zodiac, I'm Western Gota. Malawi Electoral Commission make chairperson Dr. Jifundo Kachali on Thursday announced official results of Tuesday's by-elections in seven constituencies in two words. The electoral body had cited delays to receive poor results from some areas due to transport and impassable roads. Winston Kaimila was at the Mental Center in Nilungwe and filed this report. According to the results, Felix Kaira of UTM has won a parliamentary seat in Karonga Northwest constituency Arnold William Kadzanja of Malay Congress Party has won in Nchisi North constituency. Francis Bileganyama of the Malay Congress Party has won in Ilongwe Sinja South constituency. While independent candidate Bezwick Mirioni has won in Zomba Jangalume constituency. In Chikwawa East constituency, Lodrick Kumbanywa of UDF has won. While in Sanja North constituency, Inok Chizuzu of Malay Congress Party has been declared winner. Kafandi Kale Mandevana of MCP has won in Sanja Central constituency, while in local government elections, Lucia Scalia of DPP has won in Livlitz Ward in Balaka West. Another candidate of DPP, Richard Mulingano, has been declared winner in Chitakale Ward in Mulanje District. During the announcement of the official results in Ilongwe, Malawi Electoral Commission Chairperson Dr. Chifundo Kajale bemoaned cases of violence which affected the electoral process in constituencies such as Karonga Northwest. He also noted that COVID-19 preventive measures were not observed in some cases. Kajale disclosed that a number of electoral complaints which the commission received were criminal in nature and can best be dealt with by bodies such as police. The commission would like to commend the people in some of the by-election areas for maintaining law, peace and order and calm during the entire campaign period. However, it would be remiss if the commission failed to express serious concerns with acts of violence that were experienced in Nsanje North, Nsanje Central, and Karonga Northwest constituencies. We would like to commend the police service for moving in fast to arrest the situations, and for those who have been apprehended, 
it is our honest expectation that their cases will be pursued to a logical conclusion. Criminal activities conducted during elections are like all other criminal acts, subject to the law. This is Winston Kaimira reporting for Zodiac. Meanwhile, the 5050 Campaign Management Agency is not impressed with outcomes of recent by-elections in as far as women representation is concerned. A statement from the agency signed by the agency team leader, Vwemi Chavula, says the, the analysts made following the 2019 Trabadite elections has shown a reduction of women participation of women representation rather in parliament from 23% to 21%. The agency has among other things recommended that all political parties and other election stakeholders should implement minimum standards for women's participation in elections. It is also calling for enforcement of the Political Parties Act to stop handouts. Vanani Nirenda reports. The 50-50 management agency is not amused with the continued decrease in the number of female parliamentarians in the country from 23% to 21% since the 2019 Trobarite elections. A statement released by the agency states that a periodic analysis done by the organization after the 2019 Trobarite elections has shown that apart from the reduction in women representation, women candidates continue to stand as, as independents in by elections as political parties do not support them. It also says that elder women and those who are disabled are not fully represented in the electoral process. The 50-50 management agency has described such trends as worrisome, considering that the nation is working hard to achieve the 50-50 representation in positions of decision making, saying if women are left behind, the country won't be able to attain sustainable development. They are since recommended that political parties should implement minimum standards for women participation, like the introduction of a quota and capacity building for women. It says there should be a deliberate enforcement of the Political Party Act of 2018 against handouts, a vice which affects women negatively due to challenges in finances. The agency has aided government to protect elected female members of parliament from continued com commercialization of politics and aggressive behaviors that discourage women candidates from taking part in politics. For Zodiac, I am Vanan Nirenda. Hearing of the fake certificate case of former president security aide Norman Tisari has been adjourned to April 12 because the accused is reportedly unwell. Director of Public Prosecution Stephen Kayuni said on Thursday the state was ready to parade final two witnesses in addition to the four who have already testified in the case. Alinafi Mlamba has filed this report. Lilongwe Senior Resident Magistrate Sharon Chira was set for hearing in the matter against Norman Chisali Thursday when she learned that the accused is unwell and not around. Magistrate Chira was left with no option but adjourned proceedings to 12th April 2021. In Chira's court, Chisale, security aide to former President Peter Mutarika, stands accused of using a fake JCE certificate to get recruited in the Malawi Defense Force in 1996. By Director of Public Prosecutions, Stephen Kayuni, says prosecution is ready with its case and had brought two witnesses. These are the, the last witnesses, and uh, after these, the state closes its file. So uh, on the 12th of uh, uh, April, 2 p.m., uh, the state will rest its case. However, Chisali's lawyer, Gilbert Konyongwa, says apart from the accused illness, Defence had communication glitches too. Depending on the outcome, so if the courses have got a case to answer, then we will prepare for the defence and they align the witnesses. If, he, if, if not, then it ends there. We agreed that the matter should take place uh, by way of Zoom uh, on account that the accused is unwell, so is in isolation. Because of that, we were supposed to proceed by way of Zoom. The DBP already paraded four witnesses in the matter, one of them Pythias Hewa, who claims to be the rightful owner of the JC certificate, which Chisale allegedly stole to get recruited in the army. The Civil Society Education Coalition, CISIC, has threatened to mobilize learners and parents if government does not resolve its standoff with public teachers by Tuesday next week. The ultimatum comes as a seven-day notice by TUM that teachers will resume a nationwide strike today. 
CSEC Executive Director Benedicto Kondowe accuses government of not putting concerns of the teachers at heart by trashing recommendations that they receive a once-off payment in place of the personal protective equipment. But government says it is planning to meet the teachers today for a way forward. Chimome Padata reports. There seems to be no window of opportunity to see an end to the impasse between teachers and government that has lasted for over a month. Education experts are now seeking a way out of the COVID-19 once-off payment standoff. Benedicto Gondowe, Executive Director of Civil Society Education Coalition, CISEC, told us they are now left with no option but to intervene. We are across the monitoring to see what happens next week on Tuesday and that our citizens will respond in a much more meaningful way that will be aimed at safeguarding the right to education for our learners. Teachers Union of Malawi, TUM, has held a series of meetings with Ministry of Education, but many of these ended in a deadlock. TUM President Wire Malimba told Zodiac the teachers will have to resume a nationwide strike if government does not come in quickly to resolve the impasse. The stand is still what you said in our letter, but you will come up with a statement after uh, at the end of this service. Minister of Education's spokesperson Chikwondi Jimala says the ministry plans to hold fresh discussions with TUM. TUM struck a deal with Ministry of Education to get a once-off payment for three months in place of personal protective equipment, but the deal was later botched by the Presidential Task Force on COVID-19. The deal that ended a two-week teacher's strike was initiated by the Parliamentary Committee on Education. For Zodiac, this is Shimwemwe Padata. Government has announced farm gate prices for all strategic crops for the 2020-2021 agriculture season with May set at 150 per kilogram. This is lower than the 200 per kilogram that was set last farming season. Speaking when he announced the prices in the long way, Minister of Agriculture Lobin Lowe said the prices have been arrived at after thorough consultations with relevant stakeholders in the agriculture sector. You're watching the news here on Zodiac. We'll be back with more news after this. If there's one thing that all soaps do, it's wash. From buckets to basins, bathrooms to streams, and everything in between. <laughs> all soaps wash. Yes, but Protex is different. Its reinvented formula with flaxseed oil boosts your skin's natural anti-germ defenses by 10 times more, protecting you against 99.9% .9 of germs. So what keeps us healthy? Protex! Good health starts here. Do you know, here at Lilonga Water Board, we have in place a 24-hour call center just for you, our customers. Anytime you experience a water problem, don't hesitate to call us on 253 and it's free. Low water pressure, no water situation, billing queries, bill payment, pipe burst, pipe leaks, faults, tips, and illegal connections. Just dial 253 and we will assist you. Welcome back. Here are the top stories again. 2020 MSc examinations results are out with a 41% pass rate.
make bemoans acts of violence and voter apathy in Tuesday's by-elections as it announces official results. Norman Chisali's fake certificate case adjourned to April 12th as he is reportedly unwell. In sports, President Chakwira hosts the Flames to launch on following the team's Afghan qualification. Moving on with the news, President Lazarus Chakwira has come under fire from Malawians for yet again failing to honor his pledge to assess his cabinet and bring a new list. On Wednesday, the president said the new cabinet list will not be released as promised pending a comprehensive assessment, which some Malawians we have spoken to feel is an indication the president is not decisive in his undertakings. Political scientist associate professor Bonface Dulani thinks the president thinks President Chawira is not decisive, while social commentator Victor, Victor Chipofia feels the delay is justified. We have this report by Alex Banda. And that will preserve, protect and defend the constitution, protect and defend the constitution of Malawi as by law established. So help me God. So help me God. Malawians were on Wednesday night expecting a new cabinet composition from President Lazarus Chagwera. It was not to be. This anticipation was preceded by a commitment by State House Press Secretary Brian Banda on Monday that the President would on 31st March announce his new cabinet. Last night, Banda released a statement suggesting that the President would require a few more days to make a thorough review of a cabinet assessment done by his vice president, Saulo Chirima. A political scientist, Associate Professor Bonfest Durani, has however detected flaws in the change of tune by State House. The constant shifting of the GOPOS creates an impression of indecisiveness. Uh, that is not going on okay, because this is a target that the State House has set itself it wasn't set for them by the public, but they set it for themselves. And then when they fail to live up to their promises, really it does you know, give an impression that this is a state house that perhaps is indecisive and not sure about some, with some of the things that they're doing. But a social commentator, Victor Jibofia, is of the view that the delay is justified. Because in a space of nine months uh, that the ministers have been there, it's not enough space for us to be able to analyze uh, how they've performed. So for the president to say that he needs more time, appoint new ministers, it's understandable. This is the third time that President Lazarus Chawira has shifted a review of his cabinet after pledging a public cabinet review, which he later deviated from opting from an internal evaluation together with his vice, Dr. Saulus Chirima. For Zodiac in Blanta, this is Alex Banda. Mobile and ICT services provider TNM says supporting young people to achieve their goals is key to the economic, to the socio-economic development of the country. Its chief executive officer Arnold Mbwana made the remarks in the Lungu last night when the company announced the launch of its latest engagement of brand ambassadors. Dubbed TNM Youth Stars of Malawi, the company has taken on board seven young people below the age of 22 as some of the most promising young talents in their field of expertise. Let's now, move, let's now have a look at sports. President Razaras Chakwira on Thursday hosted the Flames to a luncheon at the Kamuzu Palace in celebrating the team's qualification for the next year's Afghan finals in Cameroon. Chakwila challenged the squad to go and make Malawi proud in Cameroon. He also asked the corporate world to support Malawi national team to fulfill World Cup and Africa Cup of Nations assignments. Bright Kanyama was at the State House and now reports. President Chakwila says the qualification of the Flames to the Africa Cup of Nations has proved that the country has talent that can produce positive results at international level. Flames qualified for Africa Cup of Nations finals following a 1-0 win over Uganda on Monday, which prompted the president to host the Flames at Kamuzu Palace. Chakwera, however, called for support from private sector to support the Flames 
prepare for the forthcoming World Cup qualifiers scheduled to start in May, as well as AFCON finals scheduled for January next year in Cameroon. He, however, assured that government will support the Flames and sports in general, but asked relevant stakeholders to concentrate on the grassroots with an aim of making qualifying to international tournaments a routine. However, Football Association of Malawi President Wotanya Milandu revealed at the same event that the Flames will need over 1 billion kwacha to play in both the World Cup qualifiers and Africa Cup of Nations finals. He then asked government to consider a direct funding for the Flames. Our budget is in excess of 1 billion kwacha, but the funding we get is 300 million kwacha for Malawi National Council of Sports, which is not adequate. So we're talking about substantial sums of money, and the, the money that we have at our disposal is not adequate. So we were appealing to the president that it's a long time, the budget is, is reviewed, but also uh, trying to knock on the doors of, of our potential sponsors that they must come on board to come and support us. Flames coach Meke Mwase says meeting the president will push his charges to aim high in their assignments. This will be the third time for the Flames to play at AFCON finals following the 1984 and 2010 editions. For Zodiac, this is Bright Kanyama. Well, that's it for now. Let's take another look at the headlines before we leave. 2020 MSc examination results are out with a 41% pass rate. Make bemoans acts of violence and voter apathy in Tuesday's by-elections as it announces official results. Norman Tisali's fake certificate case adjourned to April 12th as he is reportedly unwell. In sports, President Chakwira hosts the Flames to a lunch on following the team's Afghan qualification. Visit our website, zodiacmalavi.com. COVID-19 vaccination is underway in the country. Make a decision, protect yourself, and protect your loved ones. My name is Robert Kalua. Thanks for watching.